This is Vrishal and you are watching Vrishal Rajvasa's YouTube channel. Most of the time we come across a very lengthy method to solve few critical sums in mathematics. And in such case, if you get the easiest, very simple method to solve those sums, you will definitely prefer the shortest and the simplest method. So in this video, I am going to explain a short and sweet method to solve such critical sums of one important concept of standard 8 and that is direct proportion and inverse proportion. Most of the time this direct proportion and inverse proportion is explained by taking x, y, x1, y1, x2, y2 and so on. But in this video I am going to make this direct proportion and inverse proportion problems very easy for you. Yes, just in one or two steps you are going to get the answer. So, to understand this easiest and simplest method, you have to watch this video till end. Because I am going to explain only one example of direct proportion and one example of inverse proportion. It's enough to understand this method. Yes, one example is enough to understand this easy method. Once you understand this method, you can solve as many problems you want based on this. Before we start this method, in short, in short, let us check what is direct proportion and inverse proportion. Means exactly where we have to apply the rule of direct proportion and in which case we have to apply the rule of inverse proportion. Now, where the values are directly related. Okay, how? I will tell you one example. In a family, okay, in one family suppose there are 5 members and the requirement of 5 members is 15 kg of rice. And suppose three more members are added in that family. Suppose guest or so comes to stay in their house. And now the number of members in their family is eight instead of five. So the requirement of the rice will increase or decrease. Obviously it's going to increase because number of members have increased there. So here when one value increases, the other value also increases. This is called as direct proportion. Similarly, suppose if one decreases, the other also decreases. This is direct proportion. Means directly it is related. Increase, decrease. Increase, decrease. So both the values are directly related. So it is called as direct proportion. Same example. We will take it in the other way. Now suppose. Okay. Suppose there is a stock of rice in that family. Or there is certain stock of rice in the family. For five members. Okay, again, for 5 members, this stock lasts for 15 days. Okay, for 5 members, this stock of rice can be used for 15 days. Now, suppose if 8 members are there in the family, means again 3 guests are added in this family. Now, for how many days they can use this same stock of rice? Now, here, as the number of members have increased, that rice will last for less number of days. So, when one value increases, the other decreases here. Now, suppose two members goes out of station. Okay, suppose two members goes out of station for a month or so. Means now instead of five, three members are there in the family. Now, how long the same stock of rice will last? Number of members have decreased. So, the same stock of rice will last for more number of days. So, this is what is inverse proportion. This is what is inverse proportion. Again, one simple example. Now, suppose a car, a car covers 100 kilometers distance in two hours. It is traveling with a certain speed. A car covers 100 kilometers distance in two hours. So, how much distance it will cover in three hours? It's going to cover more distance. So, when time increases, distance covered also increases. This is direct proportion. Now, suppose to travel 100 kilometers. Okay, to travel 100 kilometers, a car, okay, a car takes 2 hours. To travel 100 kilometers, a car takes 2 hours if it travels at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Of course, 50 kilometers per hour, in 2 hours it will cover 100 kilometers. Now, suppose for the same distance, now to cover the same distance, if the car increases its speed, now the car is going to travel with more speed. So, it will take less time or more time. Of course, when the car travels with the more speed, it is going to take less time. So, this is inverse proportion. So, when the value 
relates like this increase decrease at a time its direct proportion when there is increase in one value decrease in the other or decrease in one and increase in the other its inverse proportion so this is how you have to check first whether the given problem is of direct proportion or inverse proportion once you understand that then apply the method which i am going to explain now and just get the answer in less than a minute now one simple example now as i said i am going to explain this direct proportion and inverse proportion with only one example one example is enough in a factory okay in a factory where bottles are manufactured in 6 hours in 6 hours a 40 bottles are manufactured okay means one machine in 6 hours it manufactures 840 bottles so in 5 hours how many bottles will be manufactured so here what we have to do what is given here bottles and time so what we have to do here just write one thing time and bottles so whatever values we are going to compare just write here on the top as heading time and bottles now here in 6 hours in 6 hours 840 bottles are manufactured so in 5 hours how many bottles that machine is going to make so here what we have to do just write this as 6 upon 5 okay 6 upon 5 840 upon x now this is direct proportion in 6 hours 840 bottles so in 5 hours how many bottles now as time is decreased here number of bottles manufactured in that time is also going to decrease so here what we have to do straight away do cross multiplication straight away do cross multiplication 6 into x is equal to 5 into 840 x is equal to 5 into 840 upon 6 6 ones are 6 fours are 24 and this 0 140 into 5 14 fives are is 70 and this 0 so in 5 hours in 5 hours 700 bottles will be manufactured so this is how we have to just get the answer as I said, forget about x, y, x1, y1, x2, y2. Just simply write the values, compare it. Whatever we have to find, place x in that place. For direct proportion, there is no change in this fraction. Straight away, do cross multiplication and get the answer. So this is how we have to solve the problems of direct proportion. As I said, one problem is enough to understand this method. Now let's check in what way we have to solve the problems of inverse proportion. Now, next example. A farmer, a farmer is having a stock of animal food. Okay, is having a certain stock of animal food. So that stock lasts for six days for twenty animals. So whatever stock he is having of animal food, he can feed twenty animals for six days. Then ten more animals are added there. Okay. So, 10 more animals are added in that group. Now, the same stock of food, he has to feed for those 30 animals. Because we were having 20 animals in the beginning. Now, 10 more are added. Now, the number of animals is 30. But, the stock of the food is same. So, how long the same stock of food will last for this 30 animals? So, here, it is clear that it is inverse proportion. Because there is no change in the stock of food. So, for 20 animals, if it lasts for 6 days, for 30 animals, it is going to last for less number of days. And what is that number of days that we have to find out? Okay. Let us write here. Animals and number of days. For 20 animals, the stock lasts for 6 days. 10 more animals are added here. So now number of animals is 30. So how long this stock will last? So here what we have to do 20 upon 30. It's 
inverse proportion. So first we will write like this. 6 upon x. Now for inverse proportion what we have to do? We have to just make one change here. 20 upon 30 right as it is. And wherever you have x, okay, wherever you have x, just take reciprocal of that fraction. Make it x upon 6. Reciprocal of that fraction. Your x, not necessary that it's going to be always on right hand side. It can be also here. So wherever you have x, you have to just take reciprocal of that fraction and do cross multiplication x into 30 is equal to 6 into 20. x is equal to 6 into 20 upon 30. 6 1s are 6 5s are 5 1s are 5 4s are. So here the answer is 4 days. Isn't this method quite simple? So Forget all your lengthy methods, all those confusing methods, straight away solve the sums of direct proportion and inverse proportion by this method. You will get the same answer and if your solving is correct, you will get the correct answer. Your answer is going to be 101% correct. So, first what you have to do, read the problem properly, find out whether it is of direct proportion or inverse proportion and apply this method and get the answer. My dear students, this method, this easy and simple method of this direct and inverse proportion, please don't keep this method only up to yourself. Please do share this useful method with your friends. Means what you have to do? Yes, share this video among your friends. And to get the updates of such interesting videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching this video.